Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ben here, and welcome back to a hands-on introduction to computer programming. This is episode four. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about arrays, and I also want to touch on something that I kind of missed uh, yesterday, which is a logical operator. So, uh, basically, allowing us to combine two different uh, expressions in like an if statement, for example. So, we're going to be talking about those two things. In the last episode, we talked about control structures. So, if, else if. Uh, and else as well as the switch uh, case and default uh, statements um, which are incredibly important concepts in, in programming so let's go ahead and begin with arrays so basically we we've already looked at values variables data types effectively you know integer x for example x equals three that's a normal just a regular old variable and that variable we'll call it x for example can hold one value in it so actually you know what let's go ahead and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this in Python just because so I'm gonna do you know x equals 5 and I can save that out put it in my programming folder I'm gonna name it arrays.py and if I run this uh, actually I should probably also print x there we go if I run this you can see we have one value for x the number 5 okay this can be incredibly useful in a lot of places, but sometimes it can be a little bit inappropriate. For example, if you're not exactly sure how many values that you're going to need, you know, you wouldn't want to have to have like x, y, z, call that 8, we'll also change this to 3. You know, you'd have to keep making variables over and over and over again if you need a little bit more space. That's where arrays come in. So effectively, what an array is, is it is the same name for, like, you know, x, y, and z. The same name holding multiple values of the same data type. So, for example, if I had, like, you know, x right here, if this were an array, it would have to hold only integers. So, let's let's kind of see what that, what that looks like. So, um, here in Python, uh, arrays are actually kind of laid back things. Uh, the way that you would make an array is you would just do x equals and then these two square brackets. These are going to be cropping up a lot. So you right now x is an array. Now because it's Python the array doesn't really have a, a data type associated with it yet. But if we wanted to add something to this array what we would do is we would do x dot append and this is a, a function of arrays that allows us to append or add a value to an array. So in parentheses, we would put whatever value we want. And in this case, it'll be 3. Now if we save this, and see we have the printx statement here. If we were to just run this, you can see it prints out, or, uh, sorry, it prints out 3, but it prints it out in these square brackets which, you know, would be basically the same as if x were just the value 3. So, I mean, what's the big deal? Well, if we were to put another x.append statement in here and say, you know, value 8, and we run this, you can see now we have 3, 8. So that it's two different values here, and Python makes it really easy for us to just see what is all in a, a array uh, by just printing out the entire array right here. But if we wanted just one value from that array, what we would do is, for example, in this print statement, we'll, we'll go with that, right after the name of the array, which in this case is x, we would put these square brackets again. And then what we would put in here is the index of the value that we want. It's basically that is our specific identifier for whatever value we want uh, inside of an array. Because, you know, whenever we were working with normal variables, like we could call x or y, uh, we could call that the identifier. So in this case, the identifier is now a number. Now the number starts at 0, so it goes up from 0. So x index 0 here, this would give us, as you can see, 3. So 3 is index 0 inside of the array x. Now if I wanted the value 8, that would be the first, it's technically the second element, but it would be the element of index 1. So if we run that, boom, 8. So, it, and if we were to try to get like value of index 3, you can see we get an error because the, the array is just not that big in Python. So Python handles that really well for us. 
So that's the basic concept behind an array, and we can make these append statements over and over and over again. Now in C++, it's a little bit, a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go ahead and just save the uh, the file right now. There we go. And IO stream namespace std. Just kind of get our application set up here. Return zero. There we go. Now, uh, an array in C++ has to either be defined when it is, or rather initialized, if you will, when it is defined, or it has to have a set size. Now, in, in Python, the array, this array can go on just for miles and miles and miles, figurative miles and miles and miles. Um, but in C++, we have to give it a specific size, and we can't really resize it after that. So, and the, the way to set up an array is we would just do the data type. So we have to define the data type here. So in this case, integer. And we're going to name this one, we're going to name it y. Why not? And then to make this into an array, we would put those square brackets in there. Now, if I just didn't put anything inside of these square brackets, I it's not really going to know what to do unless we put values in it like this out of the box. So I can just automatically put stuff in there like that in these curly brackets or what I could do is I could give it and I reset my there we go uh, I could give it the number of effectively cells that I want in that array the, the number of elements that I want so in this case I'm gonna make an array of size 5 that's fair and so now I have an integer array of size 5 now the way that I would put something in there is I would have to keep track of the indexes myself but I could do y of index 0 and I could assign it a value so let's say I want to index 0 is 4 and then I could just print out c out 0 and l or rather y of index 0 and I guess it should also probably save that so now You can see I can run this, and it gives me the value of 4. Now, if I were to do value 2, for example, or uh, index 2, for example, it's going to give me some random number, because in that memory block that was assigned to the index of 2 for the array of y, there's just some random number there. We would see the same thing, and I forgot to touch on this, but it's actually kind of an interesting concept. We would see the same thing if we didn't give y any uh, initial value, if we were to just take y as it is. In this case, it gave us 0, and it may continue to give us 0, but sometimes you will get just some random numbers in there, and it's basically just leftover memory blocks. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about arrays here. So I could do, you know, y of 0 equals 5, y1 equals, we'll do 3, y2, you know, so on and so forth. I could continue this forever. But that's, that's the basic idea of an array. Now, there is another kind of weird concept in arrays called a two-dimensional array. And actually, you can extend this for just trillions and trillions of dimensions, and it's exactly what it sounds like. A, a, an array, a normal array, so like y, y of, you know, size 5 here, this is a one-dimensional <coughs> one array. It is just a straight line, y0, 2, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. But if I wanted to have kind of like a, like a normal table, like you would see in, in like a spreadsheet, for example, I would have to make it an array of arrays. So the way that I would do that is actually kind of simple. I would just put another square bracket in here, and I'm just going to make it a 5 by 5. So now, this will be effectively our y, or actually let me highlight down here, this will be our y coordinate, and then this second one in the second curly bra or the second straight brackets that comes right after, that'll be effectively our x value, more or less. So I can make y 0, 0 uh, equal to 5 and then print out the same thing. If my uh, terminal wants to work with me here. There we go. Sometimes it gets weird. But yeah, there we go. So now we have an array of arrays. And the same concept works in Python as well. I'm not really going to 
throw it off because there's not much of a point there. <laughs> um, but two-dimensional arrays, we could also go up to three-dimensional arrays. So I can do five and then zero, 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 and do the same thing here. You can think of this as uh, like X, Y, and Z, if you will, if that just helps you understand it better. And you can see we get the same kind of concept, but now we have a whole lot more uh, space to work with. We now have a three-dimensional array. And we can visualize this in our minds uh, because, you know, we're used to a three-dimensional world, but if we were to try to make a four-dimensional array, well, then trying to visualize that is uh, going to become a little bit dicey, but you can still do it. You can actually go up pretty much as high as you want to uh, until you run out of RAM. So, you know, four-dimensional array. There you go. Try, just have fun visualizing that. Um, but that that's the idea of a multi-dimensional array, and that's pretty much the entire idea of arrays, is uh, multiple values under one name. Now, Python has an interesting little feature called a dictionary, which is very similar to an array to a degree, um, but instead of having just number indexes in series, in a series, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and them all being numbers, uh, dic dictionaries allow us to have the indexes, or they call them the keys, uh, they can be whatever we want them to, to uh, be. So they can be like a string, they can be like a character, they can be whatever. So the way that you would make a dictionary in Python, we're going to name the dictionary dict. Actually, we can't name it dict, because that's a keyword. Uh, we're going to name it tacos. Don't know why, don't ask me. The way that we would make a dictionary here is we would do curly brackets instead of straight brackets whenever we would do the initial assignment. And then to put something in there, we would just do tacos. And then in the square brackets, we would put our key. So cats, why not? And then, uh, bup, 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 there we go. Uh, then we would assign a value. So, you know, uh, uh, keyboard cat getting really, really meme with this. And then if we were to just print out tacos, Python, Python, you can see we have our key right here, and then we have a colon to signify that this is the value uh, assigned to the key cats, in this case, and then we have the value right here. Now if we wanted to put another one in here, tacos, dogs equals bork, Bork. There we go. You can see that we now have a, a comma separating the two different uh, elements of this dictionary. So that's kind of a, a neat, useful uh, little concept in Python that you might want to know about. Okay, so finally I want to talk about uh, logical operators because I kind of missed this one. Now logical operators, that sounds like a really scary term, but in reality it's literally just and, or, and exclusive or, as well as not, but we've kind of already talked about not. So these can be useful if you're checking two different conditions, um, or if you want to see whether either condition is true or in the case of exclusive or if one condition is true but the other is not uh, you know it can be really useful in a lot of places so to show this off we're gonna start with the and operator which is pretty straightforward so we're gonna have two variables here uh, x equals 4 and y equals 7 and then we're just gonna do an if statement here now I'm gonna put these in parentheses you don't have to do this but it just it makes it a little bit more readable so we're going to say if x is the value of 4, and we just type out the word and in Python, and y equals, what did we say, 7? There we go. We'll just print out, oops, uh, we'll print out k. Why not? And if we do Python, there we go, it prints out k, because in this case, x is 4 and y is 7. Now if I were to change one of these variables up here, say y equals 2, and I run that, you can see we don't get anything, because in this case both of these uh, equations are not true. x is 4, but y is not 7. Now I can change this to an OR statement, and it will execute our print statement here, because in this case 
x is 4, so it satisfies the entire expression. Now, if I were to change y back to 7, you can see that it still runs, but there are some situations where you might not want that to be the case. And in that case, you would use an exclusive OR, or XOR. But if we were to just do XOR, you can see, first problem is that XOR does not turn blue, and the second problem is that we get invalid syntax. But thankfully, Python does have exclusive OR, and the symbol is just this kind of uptick uh, symbol here. So if we were to run this, you can see it does not run because in this case x is 4 and y is 7 so the exclusive or expression is not satisfied here but if we were to change actually we need to actually change the variable itself if we change y to 3 you can see it runs just fine and likewise if I were to change this around so that x is not the value that we want you can see we still get that value because we have the exclusive or right here Similar thing is in uh, C++, although in C++ we don't use the actual words, we just use the symbols. So if I had int x equals 5, y, whoops, int y, that would probably help, equals 9, and I did if, uh, you know, x equals 5. Now it highlights and, and I just typed it by instinct, but we actually need to use these two uh, vertical lines. You might actually be able to use and, or, oh, and it actually does support or, zor. But, okay, I guess you can use the words. Didn't know that until just now. We'll see how, how well that works. We'll just do a C out. We're gonna have it say hello this time. D++. There we go, my goodness. There we go. So we have uh, our message prints out here, because in this case, yes, x is 5 and y is 9. Now, of course, we could change this to an or, just like in Python, and it works just fine, even if we, did, we were to change uh, y to 6. You can see it still works, but if we do exclusive or, and we change this back to 9, You can see it does not uh, print out. So the uh, the symbols that I was was going to use, but I guess I don't have to. Um, for and, it is two uh, ampersands here. I actually got that wrong. It is not the two vertical bars. The two vertical bars is the or uh, operator, and then of course zor is just the one uptick here. So there we go. Works perfectly. Uh, and that is how you deal with logical operators in Python and in C++. They're actually surprisingly similar. I didn't actually know that until just now. So, And that's it. In the next episode, we are going to be looking at loops and how to uh, kind of make some repetitive actions a little bit quicker. We're going to be iterating through these arrays that we talked about. So stay tuned for that. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.